everybody, this is Shad Sullivan coming to you from the headwaters of Bitter Creek, Archer County, North Texas. We have to talk. State officials will be assisting to help identify potential alternative markets if a producer is unable to move animals and if necessary, advise and assist on depopulation and disposal methods. Ladies and gentlemen, we are plowing under vegetable crops from coast to coast. We are euthanizing millions of chickens. We are aborting sows and burying feeder pigs. We are dumping milk by the hundreds of thousands of gallons and now they are preparing us to depopulate the fat cattle ready to harvest because of a bottleneck created by the effects of COVID. This thing hasn't been created by COVID, but the effects of COVID and the logistics therein. We are in trouble. Our food supply is in trouble. And I am appealing to producers and consumers across the nation to start calling. Yesterday, the first shipment of imported beef from the country of Namibia hit the shores of the United States of America. And yet this morning, they are telling us to prepare to euthanize harvest ready cattle. Am I the only one that sees a problem in this? It is time we get the American people back to work. It is time we get money flowing. It is time we get food. Shalom. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. It is your brother Ayathun. Um, double honesty apostles. <clears throat> and shalom to you uh, elect out there. You brothers and you uh, sisters out there. This is a uh, another update. And what this uh, farmer here was basically talking about is... Uh, Summing up in one word is famine. So, my message to myself primarily, <laughs> and to rest and to the rest of uh, you brothers in Israel, is don't sleep. Do not sleep. Let's get First Peter. First uh, Peter chapter five verse eight says this: Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. <clears throat> now, if you look up the word sober, the word sober means what? It means not affected by alcohol, not drunk. Now, we're referring to spiritually being sober, meaning you're going to be on your P's and Q's spiritually. You know, you're going to be occupied in the prophecies and you're not going to be swayed, you're not going to be influenced, and you're not going to be... Um, confused by all the mismatch and gumbo of information and disinformation that's out there because our information or our faith is grounded in what our faith is grounded in the scriptures it's not gr grounded in um dj trump it's not grounded in cnn news it's not grounded in rooters it's not grounded in on youtube news our knowledge is grounded in um, the spirit of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, which is the scriptures. So we know by the scriptures, the scriptures say what? That the contractions will come as a woman. The scriptures say, Daniel's 12, that there's going to be a time of trouble. The scriptures also say that um, when the time comes to, to uh, that even though it tarries, wait for it, for it shall tarry not. So basically when shit hits, when shit starts crumbling it's going to hit the fan and it's going to be like a domino effect i mean through the spirit of the lord uh we've been saying this for the longest and now the time of jacob's trouble is finally here whether you believe it or not because in the news they're going to say you know depending on what state you're in you can open may 1st you can reopen may 20th so people are getting their hopes up and this and that but um be sober don't be like the rest of these people out here. Like the scriptures say, they they drunken, you know? They're, they drunk and they stagger from drunkenness. The scriptures also speak about the gross darkness. 
These people out here are in gross darkness. They have no knowledge of Yahweh, why Yahweh shy. They have no knowledge of the scriptures. They have no knowledge of the prophecies. And if they do, the majority of them out there, excuse me, um, are believing in lies. They have been taught, taught to them. So basically, man, in these days, the spirit of Yahweh by Hashem Shai has to be with you, meaning you got to know those names, meaning you got to pray to those names. All right. Now, I'm going to go through a couple scriptures and a couple of because um, I'll put the link in the description for this video. But um, every video, man, I fact check. So I fact checked everything he was saying and everything he's saying is uh, is true. You know, so. If you thought we had a little bit of time left, you know, as the scriptures say, it's going to come like a woman in travail. And the scriptures say that once it comes, it's not going to tarry. In other words, things are going to move fast. Um, we know that this is this is just kind of scratching the surface where, where we're at now. This is just the beginning of a long road of chaos, of tears, of sadness, of famine, of death. All right, so let's uh, let's get into the scriptures. I'm going to get rid of this tab here. And uh, let me jump here. So check this out. Number one, um, this is um, from this month, April 10th. And I don't know if you, you brothers and sisters have noticed, but you, me, myself, I have noticed that the uh, last couple, maybe last two weeks going into the, the uh, supermarkets, I noticed that from when this whole COVID-19 thing started, until now, I've noticed that shelves have not been restocking. You know, I walk into the supermarket, I mean, it's a big change. These uh, uh, ones that sell bulk, like uh, BJ's and Costco's, and they're always, you know, they're always stacked to the brim with products. And I'm noticing that the products are disappearing, but they're not coming back. So that leads a thinking mind to, to believe that, look, well, if that's happening, that must mean that there's no trucks bringing in supplies, you know. So then you start going on Google and you start looking up the information. So here enough, uh, right here, there's already a shortage of big truck drivers and a pandemic may make make it worse. And because it is uh, COVID-19, a lot of truck drivers have been ordered to stay home, you know, because uh, they're making everybody work from home now. Truck drivers can't, can't work from home, so they just got to stay home. Which means there's not supplies coming into the supermarkets, meaning whatever they had since this whole COVID-19 thing started, whatever they had is whatever they have until it runs out. And so I've been noticing that shelves have been getting empty. I don't know if anybody else is noticing it, but I noticed that they're not being restocked, you know. So as you can see here, that there's already a, a shortage of big trucks. And as the scriptures say that the grinding shall cease in the scriptures, it says the grinding shall cease. So that represents the job market. Truck driving is part of the job market. So the job market is dwindling. That means there will be less and less truck drivers on the roads. Okay. And then um, I fact check with this, um, this farmer that we just watched was talking about. And sure enough, these are within 24 hours. Today is... Um, uh, April 28th, 2020, and this was one hour ago, 17 hours ago, 13 hours ago. This is within an hour that farmers are being forced to euthanize livestock. So euthanize means to put them to death, okay? Because um, somewhere down here, um, okay, I'm, one of these articles on one of these articles on a search I read it said that the fate one of the the, the favorite methods of euthanizing livestock is a gunshot to the head. You know, gunshot to the head will euthanize livestock. Then they got to bury the corpses. But here it is. You have food shortages. You have homeless people dying. You know, homeless people that have nothing to eat. You got homeless shelters that need food. You got people in their homes that are starving. But yet, they're euthanizing. They're being ordered to euthanize thousands and thousands of crops. Look at this. 61,000 chickens were euthanized as demand so the they're being ordered by the powers that be the fda and other powers that be to get rid of the food which means what which means a famine is being forced the most high is preparing a famine okay and as us and you also if you're listening all right but as us mainly the prophets 
the Most High refers to them as what? The watchmen. We bring that out in Habakkuk all the time. I will stand upon my tower. Stand upon the tower means what? We are consistently watching out for the prophecies and to warn the people, to warn the flock. Okay, to warn the flock, the sheep of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So now you have seen there is a famine coming, and according to um what I've what I've read, you know, in this video that I didn't play to the end, but they said that the famine may come or the shortage of meat may come as soon as the end of this week. So in the next coming weeks, prepare, brothers and sisters, you know, prepare. So this is a, this is just a warning from the, the spirit of Yahweh Yahweh Shai, all right. So we know this is planned because, as he, he another thing he said is that meat is being is coming in from uh, uh, Na 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 Namibia. Now I looked that up too, and that uh, is true. Now Na Namibia is um is South uh, South South Africa. It's a part of South Africa called South Africa South Africa called Namibia. Now, as you see here, this is February 2020. Namibia, first African country to export red meat to hungry U.S. market. So if there's food already here in the United States, you go to Texas, there's nothing but farmland. Why are they ordering them to euthanize their cattle and dump their crops and to import? And now they're importing food from South Africa. That makes no sense at all. Now, if you want to think, if you want to think critically, analytical thinking, there was lead, this would lead you to believe, knowing the mo of Esau, the, the damn devil, is that um, South or the Africa right now is is very hot and in, in, um, is very hot in the news right now um, because of what's going on between Moab and Ham, and also because they. Uh, Bill Gates and uh, the powers that be surrounding this vaccine, they want to use uh, they they want to use Ham or Africa as a um, a testing ground as guinea pigs for the vaccine. So I don't know if they made they must have made some type of deal with the leaders over there in um, in Africa to allow them. They made some type of deal where they're allowing them to sell sell their meat here in America, you know, to make their money. Because, um, let me see here. As you can see here, it says United States tops the world list for red meat consumption per head. Right? Because America, as we say all the time, follows a meat-centric diet. Um, oh, here we go. Now, down, you see down here in quote from a, some type of African representative. We're able to finally export meat to the lucrative and big U.S. market, uh, Namibia. Namibia's Minister of International Relations, okay, I'm not even going to try to say that, <laughs> said on Wednesday. So this shows you basically that they jumped at this opportunity because America is that golden city. They jumped at the opportunity to sell here in America. Now, I got a scripture here. Let me see if I can find it. Um, and this is why the United States is able to just have so much power to where countries are just jumping, you know, to, to sell their food here, even if it means sacrificing citizens of their own country. Now, um, this is Jeremiah 27. I'm going to read verse 8. Now, remember, this is Matter Day Babylon, okay? And just like ancient Babylon, the Most High gave basically the whole entire world, and he spake to Nebuchadnezzar through the words of Daniel. He told him all the trees of the forest, meaning all these, the people, all the nations are going to fold under you. And it's the same thing in modern-day Babylon. Modern-day Babylon has the power to cut off nations. Now, verse 8 says, And it shall come to pass that the nation and kingdom, which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation will I punish, save the Lord, with the sword and with famine and with pestilence until I have consumed them by his hand. Pursuant to Job 9.24, the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. The Most High has afforded and allowed America, given them the power, the elites of America, give them the power to have all the other nations of the world in fear of them. All the other nations, all the beasts, all the people of the world in subjection under the king of Babylon, which are the international ruling bankers. So they're able... 
to they're able to control narratives, they're able to control global and worldwide um, operations and concerted operations, meaning all the heads of these different leaders have agreed to follow through with this plan. Okay, because believe it, or, you best believe they're all in on this plan because they're all forming this new world order together. Remember, Nimrod and the Tower of Babel was all nations that formed together to form that. Okay, same thing today. No different. So they're all working together to, to bring on this, um, to introduce the world or to bring them into the new world order. Okay. So this is, uh, this is, this is, this shit right here ain't right. They're, they're uh, destroying all the, the crops and the livestock here in America, but then they're importing meat. And what the, the spirits tell me is that this meat is going to be very expensive to the point to where only the uh, people with, only citizens here in America with uh, a lot of money are going to be able to afford it. And so it's, all that's going to do is exaggerate the situation that is going on already. It's going to accelerate race war. It's going to accelerate crime. It's going to do everything that they want to happen so that they can bring order to chaos, which is the new world order. Okay? So I got a couple scriptures lined up, but then I'm, I'm going to cut it on that. This is 2nd Ezra's verse, excuse me, chapter 16 and 17. Now, this is Ezra's, and he was taught, he was, the Most High sent him a vision, and he saw himself in the times that were in right now. Okay, the peak, we haven't reached the peak yet. We're accelerating quickly towards the peak, but right now we're at the beginning of the curve. We haven't even hit the peak yet. So verse 17 says, woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? The beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of wars, okay? Because best believe this is going to lead into a world war. Because as you get closer and closer to this thing, this new world order actually being a reality, then you're gonna have the different kings of the world. They're gonna start they're gonna start getting high minded, they're gonna start getting confident. And once you reach the end goal, you know, you're gonna start they're gonna start getting to cutthroat mode. Where they're going to start cutthroating each other. And this is going to eventually start a war. The Most High is going to put that thought in their heads to go to war. World War III. Famine and great death. The beginning of wars. And the power shall stand in great fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Verse 19. Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. Verse 20. And we see this right now. For all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be mindful of the scourges. So in other words, they're still going to say, well, you know, the COVID-19 has affected the economy. And uh, because of, because all the workers had to stay home and are sick, they couldn't keep up with the, the livestock on a farm. So we they were going bad and we had to dump them all. They're still going to fall for these weak stories, these weak alibis. Instead of snapping out of the damn spell and saying, hey, maybe this is coming from the most high. Maybe we need to change the shit that we're doing because the most high is sending scourges upon us. No, they're not. Like the scriptures say, they will not be mindful of the scourges. The scriptures also say that's going to be just like in the days of Noah. They're still going to be doing the regular everyday BS. Okay. But the scriptures also say that then it shall be known who are my chosen. Okay? So, hey, brothers and sisters, hang on. You know, all of this that we've been doing is going to be worth it. All right? Let's see what I got here. Verse Amos 8, 11. Behold, the days cometh, say the Lord, that I will present a famine of the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but of the hearing of the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So at the same time, while there was a, fam a famine, for bread, for actual food, there's going to be a famine of the word, okay? Which a famine of the word is going to be worse than a famine of, of the food, you know? Because the word actually bring, gives you hope and that gives you salvation and gives you a foundation for you to stand on. These people have no foundation. Their foundation is the U.S. job market, is the economy, is DJ Trump. That's their foundation, okay? Which is no foundation at all. The scriptures say that uh, um, the fashion of this world fadeth away and is fading away right now. D 
These are all temporal things. Okay? Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai is eternal. So therefore, if you believe on them, you will have eternal life. So there's nothing to worry about. Matthew 24, Yahweh Shai said this. Okay? When the, when the disciples asked him when we, they will know he will be coming back, he said, well, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Okay? So anyway, with that, brothers, um, I'm actually on a plantation, so I can't make this long. I'm going to cut it right here. And I hope this was uh, edifying. Matter of fact, let me see if, if I read this. I might be able to squeeze this in. Okay, I read this already. Um, yeah, brothers, so with that, on to the next one. Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh, Shai. Shalom, stay strong. Shalom.